Hello everyone, it's Kim Smith here, your friendly local yarn shop owner. Um, I've got my project with me today and I run Alternate Universe. Uh, you may know us as AU Shop UK all over the interweb, specifically Instagram. And I am Kim Smith Happy over on Instagram and YouTube uh, where you can find other videos like this. I'm trying to do more of them. It's coming up to December now. If it's not December already, I'm losing track of days. I'm filming this in advance. I don't know. Things are hectic. We're very chill around here. We're very not Instagram perfect. My chair is squeaking. It's all good. <laughs> um, I just wanted to come and chat with you guys. Um, we're doing a kind of standard podcast episode today for the mid-roll. It'll just be about 10 minutes and I'll just share with you something I'm working on and probably end up chatting about a load of crap. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just sitting in the store. You can probably hear the fans going uh, in our windows. It's getting colder now, um, which means that our single paned display windows are getting all misted up because it tends to be quite toasty in here with all of this insulation we've got going on. Wool makes fantastic insulation. If anyone is bothering you about how much money you spend on yarn, first of all, tell them to mind their own business. Second of all, you can say that it's just insulation and actually you're saving the planet. Because if you have a wall of yarn in your house, <laughs> I guarantee you your heating bills will be lower. <laughs> I mean, don't like, I mean, I say guarantee, but like, I guess I could get sued if you if you bought loads of yarn, put it in your house and your heating bills didn't get lower. <laughs> I'm just trying to cover my ass here. Um, anyway, um, so yeah, you know me as the monk with the braided hair. Um, called Brady so far on this podcast and in my day job in my real life I run an ethical yarn store um our motto is that everything here has to be natural recycled local or ethically produced and we ask the hard questions so that you don't have to you can come in through those doors and you know that everything here has been vetted basically and if you want to know anything about the production, where the sheep come from that make the yarn, who's making it, where it's made, if it's naturally dyed or chemical dyed or whatever, we should hopefully be able to answer your questions. And if we can't, we will find out for you. Um, I started the business because there wasn't anything like that. And the only place that, um, that was like that, I was doing my apprenticeship at, and it was like kind of awesome. Um, they were, very big on their ethics um and they made a lot of stuff in store and that was incredibly inspiring to me and i was like there needs to be more yard shops like this unfortunately they closed down soon after i finished my apprenticeship um but then i opened this place and people just people love it when they come in it's fantastic and i am so blessed that the other local yarn shops in nearby counties are also super nice and we're more like sister shops than rival shops, if you know what I mean. I think that is so important in small business to not use your competitors as rivals, but as inspiration, um, especially in the yarn business, because there are so many different types of yarn and people have so many different color preferences and fiber preferences and all that kind of stuff. There's just so much love to go around. Why wouldn't you share it? So um, anyway. I told you I would ramble, didn't I? Let me get, let me show you some, some knits, some knits. So this one here, I've got it in a lovely cheap bucket that I got from who knows where for like a pound, but it's spooky themed, which makes me happy. And it's really great, it's nice and light, which means I can carry it around. So this lovely thing here is something I've been working on for a very long time. It is the Tarocco sweater by Nomad Stitches, I believe. Um, it's a really nicely written pattern. Um, the cool thing about it is it looks like knitting, but it's actually crochet. So if you're one of those people that loves Fair Isle jumpers and you wish you could do it, but you just don't and you can't and you've tried, but you can crochet, then this is for you, this technique um was really unheard of until a few years ago and then like all of a sudden it's, it's blown up so this stitch is called a center single crochet uh, abbreviated to csc so it's like your standard single crochet but instead of going in the 
without the close-up, it's hard to describe, but instead of going in the normal place, you put your hook. There's like a little V and then the top bit, you stick your crochet hook in the middle there. So I like to joke that I go between its legs because <laughs> if you can't have fun with all of the dirty things in knitting, like what are you even doing? Um, so this is a cute little cropped sweater jumper. Um, it's the yarn, the yarn. Let's talk about the yarn. I've got this, a fancy cake that I got from uh, a yarn story in Bath. Again, repping my, my sister shops. Um, hello. Don't know why it cut off. Really sorry about that, but we're back. So the yarn, let's talk about the yarn. Um, this little ball is from a yarn story in Bath, which is a really sweet little like upmarket um, yarn shop where they sell really expensive skeins of super luxury yarns, um, stuff imported from America and all that kind of stuff. I try not to spend um, a lot of money on yarn that's shipped everywhere just because of its like eco footprint. But this stuff, I've never seen a color like this um, when I bought it and I just kind of fell in love with it online and I was like, please can I have one? It was like 30 quid for a skein which is a little out of my price point usually but I thought treat yourself once in a blue moon um also Carmen the owner of a yarn story is really sweet and she is super helpful to other businesses and stuff so I like to support her when I can so this color is amazing it's like a um like a gray wool that's been over dyed with like this yellowy greeny yellow mustard really really stunning and then this I think I had in my stash it was it's a pixie yarn um pixie yarn is run by Sophie we stock her in the store she lives just down the road and she's really eco-conscious and everything uh really fantastic lady as well super cute family just great company all around and her colors are beautiful so this one can I remember what the name is no it's a one of a kind it's a it's a one of a kind so it's 75% merino, 25% nylon. Um, and I actually remember to save the label from this one here. It's a Julie Aslan uh, Nomad, 80% superwash, 20% nylon. It's called Heathered Citron. Um, I know nothing about this company, so I can't tell you anything about them, what their values are or anything. Um, but it is a really pretty good color. Whereas Pixie Yarn, I know her, love her. Um, and then I bought this color, which is Thor, which is a semi-solid. I bought two skeins of this to go with them because I wanted something that would go with most of my wardrobe. I wear a lot of grays and blacks, which you've probably realized. Um, and they're super beautiful together. They go magnificently. So the gray is the main color. I've used a skein and then this is the second skein, uh, second ball. So yeah, this uh, pattern was originally, I believe, inspired by a Japanese garden or a state park or something. It's the Taraco um, place. Uh, I haven't done too much research on it, but I absolutely fell in love with it. And I should really do that. And like thinking about it, I'm like, I should really find out more about Taraco the place. But anyway. So I can't wait to wear this. The center single crochet stitch takes forever. I had to actually go and find a different crochet hook because none of the crochet hooks that we sold in store fitted my crochet style. I needed something that was quite pointy at the top but had a good like point down there. I don't know if you can see that. I have no idea what this is. I think it's P-R-Y-M is the brand um i'm using a five millimeter hook which is which is really big for a four ply project but because you're stranding them together you're like looping around it it actually feels like a double knit fabric so you've got these these bits of this color work which is really nice and thick and gorgeous and you can see that's the inside and then you've got these little bits of lace um I love these bits I think they're gonna look really nice when they're blocked out as well then you've got a little more color work and I'm actually that's split for the sleeves you've got a little more color a little bit of lace a little color work a little bit of lace and then I'm coming to the bottom um oh and it's got this really clever way of um where you'd usually do short rows on the back to create the feeling of a jumper um because you You've got more like you've got like a, everyone's got like a bit of a humpback basically so when you're making a jumper you have to design for that and this is really clever so on the front 
here on the first bit of lace, you just do a single row of crochet and then you go into the lace. On the back, you do like a triple there and then you go into the crochet and then the lace and then you do another triple at the bottom. So around the side here, you can see how it kind of gets goes from goes from little to big. You can see the yellow bit there. Really clever. I really enjoyed making it. This originally started as a knit along with my knit group, my Sunday knit group. So every week in the shop, in our near Bristol shop, um, you can come along from one to five. We're asking people to book online just so that we don't get super crowded. We used to get really crowded. We used to have like 10, 12, 15 people in here some weeks. So we've asked you to book online. We've got four spaces available to book and then I keep two spaces available for our regulars <laughs> because they're always like popping in and out and they've been coming for seven years. So I owe them a little bit of, you know, special treatment. <laughs> But you could be one of those people. <laughs> um, if you come along, um, you can come, you can bring whatever you're working on, knitting, spinning, crochet, weaving, embroidery. We've had tatting. We've had we've had all kinds. Or macrame um, or macrame, whichever way you'd like to say it. Absolutely stunning. We've had beginners that have literally never picked up a needle before in their lives um, who are looking for a little bit of help. Um, and we have seasoned professionals that have knitted for all of their six kids and five zillion grandkids um not to mention their neighbors and their neighbors cousins kids and you know all that kind of stuff so um there's usually a lot of amazing knowledge there's lots of amazing people we don't discriminate um against anyone that comes in you can be any race religion gender sexuality whatever ability um we don't have wheelchair access at the moment but that is something that we really want to get installed as soon as possible there are two little steps up to the front and we're trying to be really safe with covid and everything we've got people wearing masks when they're wandering about the store and then once you're sitting down to knit, um, you can take your mask off because there's enough space, like social distancing. We air out the shop. There's tea, biscuits, coffee, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's a really nice way to feel connected to the community and to learn some stuff and get into trouble with uh, like-minded people. So this was the trouble I got up to. Everyone finished their project. My phone just loves to cut out on me. Anyway, everyone finished their project pretty quickly, or at least in a reasonable amount of time. But here I am like a year and a half, maybe two years. I can't remember exactly when we started and I still haven't finished. I blame the technique, <laughs> not just that I'm chronically slow at crochet, um, this particular crochet technique or just making projects in general. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and sign off for today because obviously my camera is just not enjoying itself. Um, and <laughs> I hope that you are enjoying this D&D &D session that we're playing. I'm really enjoying finding more about the characters as they go along, as well as just being in a world that Carl has been prepping for years. Uh, he's been telling me about this uh, setting, the Planescape setting, for so long, and it's nice to finally see it come into fruition, like have it be real. Um, so yeah. Christmas is coming. I've got some advent calendars. I've got um, the Corner of Craft advent calendar, the yarn one. And then I've got um, a Bird and Blend tea advent calendar because anyone who follows Corner of Craft, anyone who follows Hannah over there, just we get sucked into this like fancy tea drinking thing. And um, I really enjoyed my advent calendar a couple of years ago that I got from them. So I am going to be opening those every day in December. I love doing Vlogmas and I really want to do Vlogmas this year. There's a video every day in December up until Christmas. I'm really looking forward to watching other people's Vlogmases. And there will definitely be some kind of video content in December. It just may not be every single day. Um, but yeah, I'm really enjoying making these little sponsor spots. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the episode. Uh, I think so I said something last week like... Um, I hope you enjoyed the mid-roll. Now let's get back to rolling dice. I, it's quite cheesy, but um, anyway, I'll see you later. Bye. <laughs>